Hi everyone, I'm Noelle Acheson on behalf of Coindesk Studios here at the Stellar Meridian event in Madrid. And I am with Tomer Weller, Vice President of Product at Stellar and the man to talk to about Stellar's latest upgrade. Tomer, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Now let's dive right in. Actually, before we dive into you know, smart contracts, I do want to find out how have you found the event so far? It's amazing. It's so nice to see familiar faces. We have some people here who have been with the Stellar ecosystem since uh, the early days, like 2015. Uh, but we also have a, a lot of new faces because of the uh, Sorbonne Smart Contracts. So we have a lot of new developers. So it's exciting to see this mix of, of old and new. And obviously, we're in Madrid, so uh, we've been consuming a lot of ham. <laughs> uh, so, you know, good times. It is quite spectacular, yeah. the ham here, I must say. Yeah. And I've been blown away by the variety of startups I've seen talking about their products that they're building on Stellar. It's not about markets as much as it is about impacting the macro economy, which is something that, that I tend to focus on a lot. Right, and we see a good mix of people from institutions. We also see a lot of indie developers. So there's like this great back and forth between different types of people. And getting a glimpse of how many people actually really do care about what's ahead. And you're know, speaking of what's ahead, um, let's talk about the latest upgrade, which was a pretty major one, if I gather correctly. Sure. Uh, so I've been working on Soroban, which is our new smart contracts platform. Uh, it's a smart contracts platform tailored for the Stellar ecosystem um, with a new productive tech stack and also a feature set uh, that will hopefully uh, keep the network scalable, efficient, and sustainable, sustainable for the long term. And what problem does it solve? Sure. So, you know, Stellar has always been about creating equitable access to the world's financial system, and that hasn't changed. And I think that we have uh, pretty amazing building blocks and we have real world utility already. So we have, um, you know, we have real world assets like the Franklin Templeton uh, Benji asset. We have uh, use cases like the aid use case in, in Ukraine, which is now becoming like bigger disbursements around the world. Um, and so we have all of these things. And with Sorbon, what we want to do is we want to enable developers to build more financial instruments. So we just want to increase kind of like the size of their toolbox. And how does it compete, if I may, with other smart contract platforms? Sure. When, you know, when we started this journey like a year and a half ago, looking for smart contract platforms, um, we saw that a lot of the existing platforms out there were uh, kind of lacking. Uh, both in terms of their uh, feature sets, but also in terms of their scalability features. Uh, and S Stellar already works at scale, right? And we want to make sure that uh, the smart contracts are not uh, hindering on that. And so we set out to build our own. Uh, we are using very well-established standards like uh, WebAssembly, uh, which is this binary bytecode format. Uh, we're using Rust, which is a great, safe programming language. Uh, but on top of that, we built the feature set that uh, we feel like we needed in order to keep the network efficient and uh, sustainable long term. What kind of features, if I could ask? Sure. Um, so, you know, first of all, the actual runtime is super performant. Uh, we, um, you know, it's kind of like a batteries included experience where a lot of the uh, things that you would need to program for yourself and other platforms, uh, Sorbon kind of like gives you for free. Um, another really big thing that we built into uh, Sorbon is this feature called state expiration. And state expiration deals with this very big problem that we have in the world of blockchains that's uh, pretty much ignored, and that is the problem of state bloat, which is, uh, you know, uh, blockchains are effectively databases. And a lot of the data in these databases is, um, uh, how should I not use profanity? It's, it's <laughs> right, like things like, you know, uh, an NFT drop from, tw a scammy NFT drop from 2018 yeah. that has no value at all, kind of like lives on forever and is like a burden on this database forever. Uh, so uh, with state expiration, we built a mechanism so that uh, state can expire if it's not being used. Um, and that ensures that the network remains sustainable long term. And how does that impact the decentralization aspect? Um, it's actually great for decentralization because it means that the validators don't need to run uh, very expensive hardware because what we see in some, some of these other networks is in uh, the base requirements for running a validator is becoming more and more extreme. Like you need very expensive machines, you need very expensive hard drives. Uh, and so keeping the state in check means that um, running a validator becomes more inclusive. And 
Could you talk about some applications that you're seeing for Soroban? Sure. So I think like the really exciting thing uh, with Stellar is because you already have this real real world utility mm -hmm. and you have these amazing financial building blocks, you can uh, build um, products that are at the intersection of DeFi, decentralized finance, but also connected to the existing financial system. So Stellar has something that we call the Anchor Network. The Anchor Network is a global network of interoperable on and off ramps. Um, and these range from uh, you know, small companies like Ntokens, for example, in Brazil that allow you to move uh, in and out of chain uh, through PIX, which is like this uh, local payment rail in Brazil, to more, uh, to bigger global players like MoneyGram, for example, that provides cash access in more than uh, 300,000 locations around the world. And so with Soroban, what you, you can do is you can build a financial instrument that has direct access to these financial instruments. Uh, so one of the things that we demonstrated yesterday in the keynote is a collaboration between uh, one of the wallets in the ecosystem, it's called Beans Wallet, and one of the uh, protocols building on Soroban, it's called Blend, and uh, that's, yeah, um, Blend is like a, uh, like a savings account, like a DeFi savings account, um, a lending protocol. And so with that, any user can on-ramp through a MoneyGram cash agent directly into this DeFi product. So you have this beautiful cash to DeFi experience, very seamless, very fast, um, and it provides financial instruments that are not necessarily accessible all over the world. So, you know, for us in, uh, um, in the West, it's, it seems pretty obvious that you can very easily open a savings account. In a lot of other places in the world, it's not obvious. So uh, with Soroban, we're actually making that more accessible. That is fascinating. I often hear from people sitting in very um, really privileged financial ecosystems that we don't need crypto. It's just not necessary. But that overlooks the fact that most of the world does, and Stellar is everywhere, basically. So uh, the relationship with MoneyGram, one thing that's fascinating about that, and I'd like to hear your take, is that it does abstract the need to even think about blockchain for the end user. They just need their money fast and in a reliable fashion. They don't really care what the technology is. What feedback are you getting on that kind of a utility? Uh, we're getting amazing feedback uh, from people who have traditionally been excluded from um, you know, just the ability to simply on and off ramp uh, value. And I experienced this myself uh, a few months ago. We had a conference in uh, Buenos Aires, and uh, getting cash is actually not trivial in Argentina. You either go to a bank and you get like a non-favorable rate, or uh, you need to go to these cambios on the street uh, downtown, uh, which kind of feels unsafe, right? Uh, and so MoneyGram uh, provides this amazing experience where I could just, uh, using my Stellar wallet, I could off-ramp to cash at uh, a MoneyGram agent, which are all over the place. Um, and so I think that experience has been, even for me, you know, I, come, uh, I live in the States and uh, overall my uh, access to financial services is great. But even for me, this was like an experience that was like, you know, a level above. And especially in countries that have something like a 114% inflation year on year, right. as the last I heard in Argentina. Right. The other thing that we tend to overlook in our privileged financial systems is that holding on to, or getting access even just to dollars yeah. is a problem for much of the world, and dollars are a more stable store value than their own currencies. Yeah, and, and that's actually one of the biggest uh, use cases that we see in Stellar, people uh, just using uh, still are for a savings account, um, just to uh, hedge against inflation. Uh, we're seeing this in Argentina, we're seeing this in other places in, in Latin Turkey, America. I imagine. Yeah. And that's fascinating because access to dollars is one of the pain points around the world. At the moment, probably not going to get much better in the near future, but providing these kind of alternatives, again, even if blockchain is not thought about, it's just a solution yeah. that people find useful. Where do you see this going? What's the roadmap for Soroban? Sure. So we're still, um, uh, last week we went on Testnet, which is our, our release candidate network. Um, and it's the final step before going on to a mainnet vote. Now, we're taking it slow. Soroban is the biggest protocol upgrade uh, we've seen since the inception of the network in 2015. Um, it's a lot of code. Uh, we're being very cautious about it because Stellar is already in use, because people already rely on Stellar. We want to make sure that you know we're not uh, we're not breaking anything. We want to make sure that uh, we're not slowing down the network. We want to make sure that validators um, are still 
uh, you know, they don't need like a bigger, uh, more expensive hardware in order to run. So we're doing this pretty slow. Um, we still uh, are aiming for a mainnet vote by the end of the year. That means that Soroban will be live on mainnet. Uh, we're definitely taking a conservative approach where the limitations on Soroban transactions are going to be uh, fairly low in the beginning so that uh, the existing transactions and the existing activity on the network doesn't, uh, we don't harm it. Um, and we're going to slowly ramp up Soroban over the next year. We have some uh, um, technical improvements that we want to introduce in order to make it even more efficient. Um, and more than anything, we just want to see uh, the feedback from the ecosystem and act accordingly. Uh, so we've been developing this over the past year and a half. We've had 10 preview releases, um, and we've worked very close with the ecosystem on incorporating feedback. So we've released early and often, we heard the feedback, we incorporated it back, uh, it back in, and uh, the feedback we're getting here from the ecosystem has been uh, overwhelmingly positive. Um, and even though we're not uh, live on mainnet, there's, still, there's already like a thriving ecosystem of projects. Uh, I think more than uh, 100 projects have already b started building on Soroban. We have more than 40 projects here at Meridian uh, demoing their work. So uh, it's, yeah, I'm super excited. That's amazing. And what kind of support does Stellar offer to developers who want to build on, to use Soroban? Sure. So uh, last year when we announced Soroban, we also announced a $100 million adoption fund uh, for projects building on Stellar over a variety of grant programs. The main grant program that we've activated this year is the Stellar Community Fund. Uh, it's an open application uh, program. Anyone can submit an application. Um, and like I said, throughout this year, more in over uh, in exactly nine rounds of SEF, the Stellar Community Fund, we've funded more than 100 projects. Um, and we're working on uh, more grant programs. Like I mentioned yesterday, we're developing an audit bank so that uh, projects that make it through SEF get a sponsored audit because safety and security is obviously a big um, concern of us, of ours. Um, and so uh, that's the beginning. We've allocated, I think, $8 million, through $8 million through the Stellar Community Fund this year, and more is coming. Now, Tamara, that's been the most amazing overview of Soroban and, and the potential impact it can have. I'm really excited for the mainnet vote, and I'm very excited to hopefully get to talk to you about uh, this again in the near future, see how far it's come. Thank you all very much for being with us today. Mm -hmm.